Welcome to Click Connect. I'm your host, Craig Solomon. And guess what? The one, the only, Kate Berta, founder and CEO of Kate Berta and Companies, rejoining the conversation today. Kate, how are you? And welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm doing fantastic. I've, I've enjoyed the 4th of July and raring to go. It's, it's the back end of the year already. I know. This year has blown by so fast. It seems like we were just in March having click virtual and now we're, you know, into into July and moving forward. And it'll be October soon. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. Click five live and in person on October 5th. Got to get the plug (laughs) in. So, Kate, let's talk about revenue performance. What's going on out there? How are you helping our friends at the hotel management level and owner operators with their revenue performance right now? Yeah, it has been interesting times, I'm to say the least. And every everybody, everybody, so I'm not saying anything that that people don't know. But here's what's interesting is is uh, in the work that we're engaging with um, investors, owners, management groups, and, and we kind of foreshadowed this a little bit of, of um, you know, teams have to have a, a different uh, a different thinking and a different approach in, in today's world. Things have shifted, things have changed. And, and what we saw was in, in kind of, um, like a year ago was teams knew they had to pivot. They knew they had to do something different, but they didn't know what to pivot to. So, uh, and they were looking to leadership to kind of share where we should go within revenue. And, and there wasn't a lot of, you know, this is, this is where we're going, even though there was so much volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, there wasn't uh, th- there. There was a lot of confusion of of um, where their truth true north was going, and and what what should they be doing to come out uh, to prepare for the recovery um, uh, versus waiting for the you know prepare for the return versus waiting for the recovery. So, but what we see is people waited. People are waiting for the recovery versus doing that some, some deep thinking around strategy. You know, I think the last time you were on, you know, we were getting ready to get ready, okay? And now the hotels are open. Travel is back. We've had pre-19, 2019 numbers, you know, for this past July 4th weekend. Yes. A lot of road trips. Airlines were bombarded. They had to cancel flights because of not being staffed properly. We're having the same problem in the hotels. So... You know, with revenue performance, Mm. top line monies, Mm. what are what message are you getting out there? Because it can't simply be cutting and having an adverse effect on the guest experience. Because I think right now, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't matter if it's a select service hotel, a boutique hotel, an extended stay, full service urban core destination resort right now it's about the experience people have been locked up and i think that's where one of the true problems is right now if you start looking at TripAdvisor and various other things so what's the messaging you're getting out there to your clientele about that top line revenue getting it down to the bottom line and without adversely impacting the the guest experience yeah craig i think this is a really good this is a really good uh question because what we're seeing is um you know i've been to a couple conferences which was great but what i saw was some of our industry leaders were looking at how do we keep some of that operational efficiencies that we were able to enjoy during covid Understandably, we we were able to cut out a lot of different things from the customer experience, be it housekeeping. And we're looking, you know, a lot of different teams are looking at, you know, uh, the 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 return of the questioning, the return of daily housekeeping, where it's really easy to cut to get to to efficiencies. And, and to be honest with you, there's very little operational efficiencies. Uh, to get to, to try to to get to that return. Yet, there's a great deal that can be done 
in the top line around the commercial teams or what we like to call as the revenue trifecta of sales, marketing and, and revenue management. And, and so it's funny, we're trying to change the narrative and have the conversation out there of, yes, it, it, it's, it, we understand that we, everybody wants to enjoy, you know, enjoy the, the, the cost saving measures that they were able to uh, during COVID. But the truth of the matter is they can't, you know, customer experience, um, it's going to impact customer experience. And so we want to change the, the shift the mindset and start talking about how do we become more effective um, and relevant, particularly within sales and marketing, which are really the, the, the two kind of workhorses within your commercial teams that create demand. Whereas revenue management, you know, one of my one of my favorite of the three but it is that, you know, it manages established demand. So what are we doing differently today um, and bringing outside in thinking of how do we become more effective and elevate the level of play within our sales and marketing? I agree. I think, I think that's some of it we all need to look at. I, and I think, you know, you and I have some mutual friends and, you know, I think some of them are doing that others aren't, but, you know, let's take it a step farther. You know, you and I both know that Trev Par, yeah, total revenue per available room, especially on a resort full service hotel. The gaming industry has been using that for a long, long time. And why full service and destination resort hotels aren't doing that, I don't know. Yeah, but I think that gives you more of an overall picture of how your hotel's doing and how to monetize things without adversely impacting the guest experience. I mean, I'm all about monetization of every square inch I yeah, can get, okay? Absolutely. But, you know, now don't get me started on resort fees and urban destination charges because those are nonsense and we never should have done that, okay? Yeah. You know what? If you want to raise the rate by four bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, do that, okay? Be upfront about it. Don't build in all these, these nonsensical fees. But what are you thinking of Trevpar versus Revpar? And how are you trying to get that implemented in your full service and resort hotel years that you're working with? Yeah. So this is one of um this is one of the key things that we look at. And, and so many times when we're working with in commercial teams, we look at revenue management and, and we talk about revenue management, which you know, if we're only looking at, you know, rates and space and allocation and, and you know, closing off uh, different distribution channels, we're at revenue management thinking. And so we're really looking at how do we elevate the mindset to true revenue optimization? Now, here's the thing. Everybody loves to say it of, of you know, we're, we're focused on revenue optimization. Well, if you are, then almost Trevpar becomes becomes obsolete because it almost becomes revenue per square foot, right? So we're looking at um, is there a way, is there a way that we can monetize, use, drive, you know, answer revenue um, in our, in our lobby, in our, in all of our spaces, which may or may not be related to even the room itself. And, and so many times we kind of have to think of our hotels as a space and the space could be anything. It could be a place to gather. It could be a place to ideate. Um, it could be a place where I'm able to work and have coffee uh, because I'm sick of working in my, my, uh, in my house um, um, here. So, so really leveling up that idea of what does revenue strategy look like and how do we optimize versus kind of this, this, um, revenue management mindset that we've been thinking about that really is about rev par and tro you know and 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 total revenue you know yeah i agree with you on that and you know what i think our our friends in vertical markets san francisco new york chicago miami to a degree um even your hometown of dallas to a degree yeah um yeah they're very good at maximizing that dollar per square foot 
with multi-purpose rooms or facilities. Yeah. You know, it could be rented out as a meeting space. It could also be a private dining room. It could be almost used as a we work for an office if you want to get them out and work on a specific project without any other eyes and ears around. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, Moxie in Manhattan does a great job with that. And there's various other hotels that do that as well. And I think that's, you know, understanding your footprint and what you've got and what's available and what you can create in that space plays right into what you're saying. I mean, what are you thinking about the, the multi-purpose side and, and figuring that all out? I, I think you're spot on, Craig. And I think along that same line is, is what can our hotel, what can our space be? You know, what, yeah. what, as you were saying, which was your point. Now, how do we, how do we bring in trends and, and create this almost this inflection point where we're able to capture on capture things that are happening within within the diaspora of, of our world today? So things all of a sudden, if we, we have this alignment of trends and what's happening in the marketplace, what people are gravitating to, what they're talking about, all of a sudden our ballroom that's going to be going um, unused until group returns could become a space where we're doing, you know, virtual reality or VR systems or, or a driving range sure. or, um, or, you know, looking at uh, sustainable hydroponic there. If we, if we, let go of what the construct of what we think of as a traditional hotel, all of a sudden that whole idea, I have a space, yeah. what are the trends that are happening around me? And how do I, how can I monetize that to bring people in to something they already want to experience? Right. And we're not talking about vending machines, okay? <laughs> so get that right out of your mind right now. <laughs> right. Right. Or another ATM machine that's got a rate, you know, of exchange that's just way too high. So, right. um, you know, Kate, you've got a new platform. Yes. That you're ready to launch or about ready to launch. Yeah. So you and I had a conversation about this a couple, three, four weeks ago. And it sounds very, very exciting. How about you tell the audience about your uh, new new venture? Yeah, thank you. It's uh, the program's called Ignite, and it's a SaaS based uh, subscription platform. And here's why we built it: is when I was uh, a practitioner and working out in the world, I I couldn't find a solution that would marry our financial vision and where we wanted to go within our performa to actually what was happening with our sales uh, sales marketing and and um, uh, revenue management teams and marry those two, uh, marry those two together to create strategy around the most valuable customer. Um, so if it wasn't there, I, I, I built it. And here's what we found is that um, in one case we found just because currently those systems are disparate um, and, and not connected, we were able to find $1.3 million that was just an oversight uh, because of that, because of the lack of integration, sure. um, which is material, which is material. Um, what we also know is 90% of organizations don't actually do strategy strategy planning. Um, of some of the, the uh, folks that we're talking to or engaging with, they don't have strategies in place. And so what we know for sure, what we know for sure is we don't win the marathon if we don't train and we don't have um, we don't have a focus on what is our strategy. So right now there's two there, there's three really overarching things that we see in the marketplace. One, there's random acts of activity that that we that becomes a huge expense because we're all doing we're all having to do more with less. Two, that we're focused on product versus the customer experience. And three, um, that we're placing activity um, and output over impact and, and financial gains. So what this program does is it brings those th things forward of how do we measure impact over random acts of activity and how do we align those strategies and tactics to our financial vision around our most valuable customer segments? I agree. And you know what? It's 
it is strategy. It is tactics. You found a million three in one property because of the lack of cohesiveness and conversation and ability for one department to talk to another. So guess what, everyone? If you can find another million three, besides adding a lot of that to the bottom line, you know what else you've just done? You've just increased the value of your asset. Yeah. So if you could add a million three, a million five more value to your real estate holdings and you take that to market and the broker can get you more, guess what? Everybody wins. So um, I, I encourage all of you to contact Kate. And the reason I'm saying contact Kate is because, Kate, we're out of time. How can people get a hold of you? <laughs> Shameless plug. Because I'm to blink with you all the time. Uh, you know, easy enough. It's at Kate at KateBerta.com. Very clever. <laughs> I love it. Hey, KISS philosophy. Keep it simple. It works for me every time. So thank you for joining us today, Kate. I really appreciate you making the time to rejoin the conversation. Um, and... And you get to meet Kate at Click5 live and in person on October 5th. So I want to thank our production partners, Red Roof Franchising and Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group. Please give them a call and let them know that both producer Danny and I sent you. They've got great teams over there and they can help you. So please reach out to them. And I want to thank you, our audience, for joining us. And if you'd like to be part of the show or if you want to suggest a topic, reach out to Danny and I via DM and we'd be, love to talk to you. Also, if you could, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe and smash that bell so that you're notified of updates because the show drops there first. Then it goes out to the rest of the social media platform, including LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. So thank you for joining us. And please remember... Be kind, share your knowledge, and go be amazing.